the mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every time this passage from the Gospel of St. Luke is read, it is essential, although I have done it many times, at least personally, it is essential to explain the meaning of the word brother. Naturally, there is a meaning that is linked to brotherhood as the fruit of being the son of the same father and the same mother, or of a father or of a mother, but not both. In Spanish, we call that stepbrother, but there was not in the ancient Aramaic and Hebrew the same, the same richness of vocabulary that there is in our much modern, modern languages, and also the appellative of brother was given. Even more, they called siblings to those that we call today first cousin, that is the son of the uncle or aunt, the son of a brother or of the sister of your father or of your mother, a first cousin. These three categories to designate them, the same word was used, siblings, children of the same father and mother, siblings, instead of step-siblings, a word that did not exist. Having the father or mother in common and the first cousin, that word did not exist either. There are examples in the Bible in which this is seen to be, and so they are called brothers, and instead they have, in the Bible appears, different parents. I believe that this should be clarified. On the other hand, if the Virgin Mary had had other children, our Lord would have had brothers, brothers and sisters. There is another text where he speaks of brothers and sisters. It is impossible that the Blessed Virgin would have left her in charge of a stranger, as was St. John the Evangelist. Not only because there was a custom at the time to go to take care of the elderly, it was a duty that no one skipped before God and the, uh, before the neighbors who fiercely criticized the one who did not take care of his elderly parents. Not only because of this, but also leaving the virgin in the hands of a stranger meant taking away her security. Not only that stranger, no matter how much he loved her, would not, not love her the same, but that stranger, in this case, the St. John the Evangelist, was being or could be persecuted, and therefore the virgin was much weaker and fragile being with St. John than if she had gone into a village with one of her children or even stepchildren. And I think this is something that must always be said, because the Protestants make wrong use of this word, brother, to convince some Catholics who have no information that the Church deceives when it says that the virgin was always virgin and had no other children. Having clarified this, the most important thing is the end of this fragment from the Gospel of St. Luke. My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and keep it. I believe that for any of us, and not only for those who love the Virgin, but for any of us, it is a dream. It is an ideal to love Jesus as his mother loved him. No one loved Jesus as his mother. No one. No one. I mean on earth, of course. Jesus, the only Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, the relationship between Him, the Father, and the Holy Spirit is different from any relationship we can have between human beings. But on earth, no one loved Jesus as much as Our Lady. And the Lord is telling us what we can do to love Him as Our Lady loved Him, so that He can give us a title more than honorific, the most desired title, which would be, You are my adoptive mother, the physical mother, obviously, we cannot be. You're my adoptive mother. It's a wonderful thing if Jesus would tell us, you love me so much that I, I name you my mother. Well, there could not be a greater title than this. How can we love Jesus like Mary? The Lord says it. He says it because if you do not listen to the word of God and put it into practice because you do not do the will of God in your daily life, because you do not love me as my mother loved me, starting from the conception, that is, not the physical conception, but the spiritual conception, that is, unity. Work for unity, strive to create unity, strive to teach and practice that it is worth more, the last perfect in unity, 
then the more perfect in this unity, I do not say the imperfect, but the less perfect, that is to say, you have one point of view, the other one has another point of view, and why must the things exactly always be done as they seem to you? Listen, listen, accept on things that are really important, those red lines, which you almost have, the essential things, accept on those things, it's much better to see than break. There are more important battles to fight and win than trying always to be right. Learn to give in rather than to break up. Learn to give in. It is the secret of a coexistence and that is why favors unity and do it out of love. In this way you imitate Our Lady in her spiritual motherhood because it was Jesus who said, where two or more are united in my name, that is, with the kind of love that I have taught, there am I in their midst. Another way of imitating Our Lady, the mother takes care of her son, she takes care of Jesus. And where is Jesus to take care of him? In the Eucharist. Take care of Jesus in the Eucharist, keep him company, help the church to be clean and worthy as the house of God. Take care of Jesus in the people who are alone, the elderly, the sick, those who have nothing to eat, those who are unemployed, migrants, refugees. In each person who suffers, there is a face of Christ. Take care of Jesus. Another way to imitate Mary, educate Jesus. The mother educated. She educated Jesus. She says, how can I educate Jesus if he is God and I am man? She educates Jesus present in men. Evangelize. Evangelize. To your own in the first place. Be a portion and importunate, says St. Paul. Evangelize. Begin with your own and those around you. Evangelize. Bring God to people with your witness and when possible also with your word. Another way to imitate Mary, defend Jesus, defend him as she did, taking him with St. Joseph to Egypt so that Herod would not kill him. Defend Jesus. Defend Jesus from those who within the church are denying his divinity. Defend Jesus from those who say his word is outdated and must be forgotten, at least in part. Defend Christ. Another way to imitate Our Lady, unite yourself to Christ in your personal sufferings, carry your cross every day. This is what Our Lady did when she stood at the foot of the cross, seeing the terrible scene of the death of her son. And she did it to support her son. She carried it on her back, a pain that she could have spared himself, because eyes that do not see, heart that does not feel. Although she would feel the death of her son very soon, it was not the same to see him die in that way. And yet, she knew that Jesus needed her there, and that she had to support him, and she was there. Jesus needs you when you are on your cross, so that you can give him your cross and accept it again, what already has become his cross. Accept it again out of love for him. The Lord needs us and he needs his mother. Now it is up to you that Jesus gives you the wonderful title of adoptive mother of Jesus. Work for unity, help those who suffer, evangelize, Defend Christ from the enemies from without and with from the enemies from within. And carry your daily cross so as to be more united to Christ and to do His will. May it be so.